asking and seeking the Lord when would be the right time uh, to deliver the right messages and uh, say, preacher, you have more than one. We're working on five right now, just to let you know. Amen. And uh, this is one that's been on our heart for a while now. And um, I'm hoping that you will pray for me uh, because I know sometimes in dealing with certain subjects, it can become offensive. And that's not my desire this morning, church. It is not. Uh, but if you will find John chapter number 10, John chapter number 10, and uh, we want to be mindful to the Spirit of God this morning and uh, say no more, no less than what he wants us to say. John chapter number 10. If you're able to stand with us, will you stand please? We'll not read the totality of the text here of what Jesus is dealing with. I want to focus in on one verse of scripture here. It's verse number 10. Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Pray with us. Father, we are thankful, we are, that we can come before an almighty God who sees everything and knows it all. We can trust in you, O oh Lord, that your holy will will be done. Father, we can trust in you that you will speak to hearts as you've done so faithfully, Lord, through the word of God, through the preaching Lord, I thank you that it pleases you still to this day. And Lord, we want to be a servant that brings you glory and honor and praise on this day. Father, I pray for everyone that's in attendance, in-house and outside as well. That Lord God of heaven, you will minister unto the um, We ask, oh God, because we know that you can. We ask, oh God, because we know that we need it. Lord, we don't need what man can provide, but we need what you have for us, oh Lord. Father, we're asking this, O oh Lord, that you again get all glory and honor and praise. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. You may be seated here this morning. And uh, church here, as we said in the text, Jesus Christ is dealing with and talking about him being the good shepherd. Amen. And I'm glad that he truly is the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd of our soul and he guides us and cares for us as the psalmist wrote over there in Psalms 23. I'm thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ being the shepherd and cares for us and protects us as he does. But also in here, the text, and he deals with uh, the subject of the thief. The thief we know is the devil. And the devil, he cometh, but for one thing and one reason only, and that is to take life. That is to destroy life. That is so that people will not have life with God, and they'll not have life down here below. So with that thought in mind here, church, we're going to be talking about here, we're going to be dealing with the subject of suicide this morning. We're going to be looking at this here, and I pray that you will... Please lean in and give your undivided attention to God's holy word. Now, I typically don't give disclaimers to messages, but I just want to let you know on this one right here, I don't claim to be an expert in this subject matter. I don't claim to, to know everything and the totality of it. And it's impossible for one service for me to cover everything in dealing with this subject. But I will be respectful and I will be reverencing unto God and unto you as well. So please, just for a moment, if you will, listen with all of your heart. Our subject of suicide, it comes from, that word comes from the Latin word suicidium. And it means self-murder. It means to destroy one's self. And as we read here in the text, that is exactly what the devil wants. He wants to destroy the life of of people. Now, may I say this by way of introduction? Suicide is not restricted to age, to color, to education, to financial. Matter of fact, I had a nurse just tell me this week, she said, Preacher, you don't understand the, the kids that come in and how they're ages from 10 to 14 and they're wanting to take their own lives right now. And she said, Could it really be that bad? Could it really be that bad? 
to where little kids want to end it. So they're cutting themselves and they're reaching out to the doctors and saying, I don't know why and I want help and I need help. In South Carolina, the, 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 the suicide rate is on a rampant increase, church. And it's rising between the ages of 10 and 14. Just last year, the youth, and that goes from 10 to 18, there was 123 that took their life in South Carolina. There was an increase there from 2012 to 2019 of 4% in South Carolina. Seven out of 100,000 women will take their life this year. 27 out of 100,000 men will take their life this year. South Carolina leads the nation, leads the nation now in all ages and age groups that's been classified in committing suicide. Through this pandemic, it has risen over 25%. The death rates of suicide has risen 25% from the ages of 18 to 24. Now I gave that all to you to let you know the severity of it, not to, not to bore you for sure, and I hope that did not. But to let you know that this is something that is real. Every day in the United States of America, there's 132 people that are taking their lives. Boy, we see so much that's going on in the news today about all this other stuff. But we hear much little, not, not very little about what's going on of people taking their own lives. I want to let you know this here, church. We need each other. Amen. You need each other. I need you. And boy, I know that we're living, and I'm fixing to say some things that's not popular. But boy, this thing of separation, this thing of isolation, this thing of uh, keeping ourselves apart from one another, I believe has done more harm than has good. I know that's not popular. Now, I want to answer some questions here. Suicide, people will ask preachers, is it sin? Well, friend, as we read, it is self-murder. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 13, the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder in taking in your own life. Some people will say that this is the unpardonable sin that is a lie. That's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God does not tell us that this is the unpardonable sin. No, blaspheming the Holy Spirit of God is the only sin that will not be forgiven. May I say this right here? God is not for people taking their lives. I want to say that again. God is not for people taking their lives. He wants us to have life in what church? Have it more abundantly. But the devil is. May I say this now? There's some other questions that people have about this subject. Can a saved person, preacher, commit suicide and enter into heaven? Well, I'll answer this question with a question. I'll answer it with a question. What's the basis of one entering into heaven? Amen. The basis of one entering into heaven comes through John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We find it in here in John chapter 10 about this thing of salvation. It is so secure, my dear friend. No, it is not for you and I to live as we want to, but it is a no-so. I'm so glad, hallelujah. It's an assured salvation here in John chapter number 10 and in verse number 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they know they follow me. I have given them eternal life, Jesus said. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We talked about this last week as well. In John chapter 14 and verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Amen. I'll say this right here. You can't lose it, friend. Listen to me. Suicide is an internal struggle. It's an internal struggle of the soul. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26, we find out that God Almighty said what? Let us make men. Man is a triune being. We have a mind. We have emotions. And we have a will. Our mind sometimes, may I say this, is a battlefield, church. And those that are struggling, that are struggling with suicide... Boy, in their mind, they're just struggling to keep their thoughts right, to keep their thoughts in the right pattern and keep it fixed on what is correct. 
May I say this, their emotions are unstable at times. They're at extreme happiness or at extreme low. And those that are struggling with this thing of suicide, their will, one minute there, you can find them being the strongest individual, and then they're so weak and frail. I want to say this now, there's a lot more suicidal thoughts are often triggered by something that happened physically to the individual. Please, I hope you're hearing me this morning. Something physical that happened presently or past. And we've talked about this, but I just want to say this again today at the notes. God will help us out with whatever we're going through now. Amen. In the past or in the presence, He can't give us victory over that. Some are dealing with these physical things of abuse. Of rape and rape just doesn't go with uh, with the little girls or with females. But in the day that we're living in, even grown men are being raped. Molestation, domestic violence, and verbal abuse—things that trigger suicidal thoughts, stress that comes your way. And boy, I tell you, you know, stress it, sometimes when it comes our way, church, you know, we, we, we're not expecting it there. And with this thing of this pandemic that's come about of loss of employment, people have taken their lives. The stress of failure in life and a failure in career or, or lost loved one or divorce or breakup, these things trigger. There's even those bodily triggering mechanisms of chronic pain and being in such agony there of depression, of major surgery, and for some women, childbirth triggered the thoughts of suicide. The psalmist said this, listen now. The psalmist said in Psalm 55, verse number 6, Oh, that I had wings of a dove, that I could fly away. Yes, it gets that hard at life. And for those that act like it doesn't, friend, you can cover it up all you want to, but the reality is it gets that hard. It gets that tough. That we just ask, well, all I want is some wings and to fly away, to get away from the struggles, to get away from this life, to get away from this thought, to get away from this stress, to get away from this abuse, this present pain that I'm in. I want to get away from it all. It's typically those emotionally unstable, isolating themselves, and that have been traumatized. Now listen to me. There's seven people I want to draw your attention to from the Word of God. That committed suicide. Number one, Abimelech was a king. You find out in Judges chapter number 9 and verse number 54. That when he attacked there the city. That a woman threw a stone down and crushed his skull. Crushed his skull there and he turns over to the young man. He says, kill me. Kill me here. At least somebody think that this woman took my life. He wanted to hide the truth. He didn't want the world to know exactly what took place in his life. And there are those that take their life because they won't, don't want the truth to be revealed. Samson was one as well. We know the story, how he lost his eyes and cut out his hair and all that stuff there. And he was held captive. He was put between two pillars and he prayed. And here he pushed down the pillars and killed himself along with the Philistines for what? Revenge. For revenge. We also see of King Saul. And King Saul, how he fell on his sword there in 1 Samuel chapter 31 and verse number 4. Why? Because of the shaming, his failure there of falling and failing the responsibility of being the leader that God's called him to be. We also see that there was the armor bearer of Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 31 and verse number 5. Those that have been in war, that have faced war, and come back home and say, you know what? I don't deserve to live. Then we see as well the fifth one here I'd like to draw your attention to is Athiphophel. And he was one. He was a counselor. He was a counselor to the king. And the king turned to someone else. And you'll find that, friend, in 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 23. And here the Bible says he said to himself, he's no more good. He went home and put his family in order and hung himself. There are those that have the mentality that no one needs me anymore. 
I'm useless. I will not be missed. Then we find of Zimri, and Zimri, he was one as well, that put confidence in the king, in the king's palace and so forth. But when it was overran and overtaken, and you find that in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse number 18, he said, there's no hope. There's no hope here for me in my life, for my soul. And he burnt himself alive. And then the one that often people know about and talk about is Judas, is a carrot. Who for regret and guilt of selling the Lord Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver went out and hanged himself. The weight of guilt, friend, is a weight that you cannot bear. And Jesus didn't want him to do this. God didn't want none of these men to do this here. And unfortunately, all too often, what we have, uh, people have come to the conclusion that this is the answer. That this is the answer. I, I got to do this here. But may I say this? And I want to say this as clear as I can. Suicide is not the answer, friend. Amen. Taking your life is not the answer. There's three groups of people I'd like to talk to just briefly. Number one, I'd like to address the church. Church, we, the sheepfold, the house of God, the body of Christ, are to be the light of this world. Amen. We are to let people know you can come and get help. We're not going to cast a stone at you. Mm -mm. No, we're not going to hurt you. We're not going to put you down. We're here for you. Do you hear me, church? That's what we're to be. We're to be the individuals. And we should be praying as well. Now listen, for God to give us discernment, to be aware of what people are going through. Why? You're good at it and so am I. I'm putting the mask on. We're good at it. Oh, listen, church, may we be ones that will ask God to give us the courage. The courage to do what? To ask people to be honest, to step over, to be aggressive, to truly show your love and affection for them. To take that awkward moment and ask, not just... So we, we, we've gotten used to this now, church. Listen, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. All right, no, I'm just speaking truthfully now. We've gotten so used to saying, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, and we go. And we leave. And we truly need to say, will you, uh, will you be honest with me? You know, I, I've been really concerned about you lately. Say, so preacher, we're, then we're going to be offending them. I'd rather them be offended at me. I'd rather them be offended at me because I love them. Amen. Then to let them see, then let them choose to take another route, church. May we be courageous. I want to say this to the church. We are to be the body of Christ. And if you live and you live and you read, you see the word of God and how Jesus in his body, what did he do? He ministered to others. We're to be the body now. What does that mean? That you need to open up your life into others. It ain't easy. Why? Life is hard. It ain't easy as well. And I'm just going to say this is not. To have other people tell you. I remember the first person that ever told me he wanted to take his life. I won't say his last name, but his first name is Bobby. And he told me there when we lived in Hartsville. He said, he said, Jason, I had the gun out and it was right there. He said, I was this close to pulling the trigger. Those are things that we don't want to talk about. Those are things that when you have conversations, we like to talk about the goodness. We like to talk about things going great and all things going well. But life gets hard. Now listen. The second group I want to talk to now, listen. It's to you that have been affected by suicide. Samson, Saul, Judas, just some of them. They left families behind. And I want to talk to you just for a minute. It's not easy. And I'm not going to act like I know how it feels. But I want you to know this according to the Word of God. In, uh, in uh, um, Ecclesiastes there, chapter 3, verse number 4. Confront your feelings. There's a time to weep. There's a time to mourn. Confront your feelings. Be honest with God. 
Be honest of how it made you feel. Be honest with yourself and grieve. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. And grieve. Let the Lord do this for you as well. Let him give you and bring you to that place. If you have anger, if you have bitterness, to forgive them. To forgive them. Will you let the Lord minister healing to you? For he is the counselor. He is. We read that over in Isaiah chapter 9. He is the counselor. He is the great physician. He's the healer. And he can heal you. Let the word of God resonate in your soul there and bring forth that life that you need and that help that you need. Take that time in prayer, child of God. And I'm telling you, if you've been affected by this here, let the word of God, the preaching of God's word, a song, the spiritual song, minister unto you. And then my next word would be, there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And I know we often talk about in reference of Jesus, but it really in the context, that talks about one down below. Amen. It talks about a fleshly partner. Confide in someone. One that you can trust. You just open your heart unto them. Why? We're here to do what, church? To bear one another's burdens. To, to, to bear one another's care and the hurt. To love on each other. Be willing to talk, even though it may be tough. Now, the last one I want to talk to is to one that is tempted. The one, maybe, now I say this here. As I said, you look great this morning, you do. But I don't know what's going on, on the inside. I've had too many conversations in my office of people that look great on the outside. They came to me and said, Preacher, I just wanted to end it all. I looked at myself and said, Why? I don't deserve to live. I looked at me and said, This is it. I have nothing to live for. I want to talk to you. And I want to let you know this here. That the influence, the attack that is coming your way. God is not doing that, friend. It is the enemy. And I want you to know this. Do not listen to his lies. For that's exactly what they are. They're lies. The lies. And he's the father of lies. Those lies that are being said to you in your mind and in your soul there. That is pointless to go on living. There's no use in me in continuing to live in here. Things will never change. I'll, I'll always be this way. My family will always be this way. Life will always be this way. These lies, it'll be better if I'm gone. And the biggest out of them all is no one will miss me. No one will miss me. You'll be missed, friend. You'll be missed. I want to say this to the tempted. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. This morning, believe God. And there's Psalm, it said in Psalms 53, I mean 58, 56, verse number 13. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt thou not deliver my feet from falling? Psalmist said, God has saved my soul from death. And keep me as well physically from falling. Yes, God can do that. Why? Because God's a refuge. Hallelujah. He's a refuge. He's the place of help. Amen. I want you to know this here. Listen now. Jesus has said it to everyone. He wants us to have life, everlasting life, and abundant life. That's what Jesus wants for you. That's what God wants for you. If anyone wants you to live that life, he has a purpose and he has a plan for every single purpose. For every single person. He has it. And all he wants you to do is live it. Prevention. Prevention comes from being honest. And friend, just like in salvation, the honesty has to start with us first. We've got to come to the realization of who we are. You've got to come to the realization of what's going on internally and be honest 
with yourself. There's no shame in admitting this. There's no, there's no shame in it. May I say, would be honest with yourself and reach out for help. Reach out for help. Ask for it. Ask of the Lord. Ask of your friend. Ask of a family member. Friend, it don't have to be me. It doesn't, I promise you. I just want you to reach out to somebody that's going to help you. Somebody that knows the Lord. Somebody that will tell you about how much God really loves you and how much He does have a plan for you and what His will and His purpose is for your life. Amen. There are people that love you that will sit down and love on you and comfort you. May not totally understand, but they'll support you. There are people. Don't listen to the devil's lies. I'm done with this here. As I said, I know there's so much more. I promise you, I know there is. If God Almighty were to do this, and I hope everyone's hearing this outside, and you hear me on the inside, and listen now. If God Almighty were to do this, if He, this morning, were to go into the depths of your soul and display on that screen right there to everyone of what's going on eternally, what would be seen? What would be seen? So why ask that question, preacher? Because as I said, we don't know, but God knows what's going on. I don't know, but you know what's going on. It's time that we drop this masquerade. It's time that you reach out. Stop going in that. Stop thinking you got to do this all by yourself. You don't have to. I am wanting to warn you this morning that we are here. And don't listen to the lies of the devil. Will you bring, bring it all. Bring it all to the Lord. Lay it down on the altar. Bring it to the table. Bring it to the place and cast it at his feet. Jesus said this now. He said, take up my yoke and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul. The Lord can do the ministering to you. So can a friend. So can a loved one. I just want to let you know now. It's time. It's time. Quit hiding. Quit being good at hiding the struggles, the thoughts, the in internal war that you're, uh, that you're having on the inside there. Stop it. Now. This may even apply to you that are lost this morning and you know that you are. There's an internal war. You know you're lost and you need Jesus. Will you come to him this morning? He said, I'll give you life. If you come to me, I'll give you eternal life. I don't know what you're faced with. I promise you I don't. I know some, but not all. But I want to let you know this today. That there is help in Christ. You don't have to go down that pathway. Don't take your life. Christ paid too high of a price for you to take yours. I'll say this and I'm done. Will you let the Lord minister today? Will you do that? Will you let Him work on your mind, your emotions, your will? Will you do that? For those of you that may watch this later on, and so I, I don't have nobody. Well, my dear friend, you just call up here at the church. You've got me. And I'm letting you know that you've got me, church. I don't know how the Lord may have spoken to your heart this morning. Church, he's may have convicted you. He's may have dealt with you. And say, well, you know what, preacher? I've got to get out of my comfort zone. I, I, I've, got, I've got to get out of my comfort zone. And you need to talk to him. Maybe you've been affected by this here. And you still need to talk to the Lord. Maybe you are even thinking, life's not worth the living. And you need to talk to the Lord. 
I cannot close this service without giving you the opportunity. I cannot. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray unto you right now. Your will be done, Lord. Your will be done. I pray, Father, that all of us in the church house right now and outside, being truthful with ourselves or being truthful to you. The thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. We know the devil doesn't love anybody. He don't even love himself. And all he wants is for people to take their lives, to ruin their lives. But Jesus, you said you've come to give us life. I pray on this day, Lord, if there may be guilt and there may be shame and there may be struggles or whatever it is that people are faced with, Lord, that you will minister. Relieve them, O oh Lord God. Take away that heaviness. Lord, I pray that you reach down with your hand and help them. Father, I pray for the church that we will be that light Lord, we'll be that light unto the world. Father, help us this day and age, Lord. Father, we are asking for that one now. Right now, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Obedience unto you. Coming to you. I'm so thankful, Jesus, you said, come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, burdened. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand to your feet, church?